So here's a shocker that most Christians are not ready for. Um, there's probably an area in your life, in your heart, in your mind, in your emotions that is still inhabited by demons. And I know, you know, most believers are not willing to admit or even know or acknowledge that um, we still need further healing. We still need further deliverance. And so the two most controversial topics right now, specifically in the Pentecostal church, is the prophetic ministry and the deliverance ministry. These topics are very polarizing, but we need to talk about it. And I know some of you are like, Danny, I go to church every week. I write my check. I pay my 10%. I sing in the choir. I speak in tongues. How dare you even suggest that I have demons? The truth is, and we need to have this conversation, the average Christian has evil spirits living in their heart and in their mind, and they don't even know it. Okay, friends and family, so this is Pastor of Overcoming Church, and I know the topic of deliverance is very polarizing, so this is not just something that I can put in a text post on Facebook and leave it there because it's too much stuff surrounded around this conversation. But the truth is, brothers and sisters, the average Christian, especially in this evil, toxic culture that we're living in in America, has evil spirits abiding in them and they don't even know it. So the question is, can a Christian be possessed by a demon? Absolutely not. Okay. At the moment of regeneration, that is when Christ came into your life and the Holy Spirit now dwells in your human spirit, you can not be possessed. Because if you remember, the Bible teaches us that we are a spirit, we are a soul that so happens to live in this body. And so when the Holy Spirit comes to live within a believer, he takes residence in your human spirit. You already had a spirit before the Holy Spirit came. It's just that now he encompasses your, the, your, your, your spirit man. But then we have a soul and we have a body. And so when you talk about a believer being oppressed or influenced by demons, I know some of you may not want to hear it, but the average Christian, y'all, is influenced by demons every single day because we also have a soul, okay? And that soul encompasses our mind, our will, our emotions, and demons, they hide in strongholds. A stronghold is the construct of the ideas, the perception, the imaginations, the thought process, the attitudes that you have that create your reality. It creates your perception. The stronghold creates your thought process, your attitude, how you look at things, how you respond to things, how you view things. And so spirits will take up residence in that stronghold, which is like their way of living in a house inside of your psyche. OK, and so I want you to hear this, friends and family. The reason why I am sharing this video with you, it's because there is this strong manifestation of self-righteousness that is exuding from the body of Christ. I hate to use this example, but have you ever walked by somebody and you knew for whatever reason they didn't wash up this morning? They did not put on some deodorant and you don't even have to just, you know, do that. You can just walk by them. And the odor is so strong that it permeates the very place where you are at. There is this strong permeation of pride and self-righteousness that is operating in believers. I don't know what it is. I believe that it, maybe it has everything to do with what Paul told Timothy the last days would look like. And in so many words, when you look at that description, it's narcissistic. It's pride. It's egotistical. It's having a form of godliness, but really denying the constant power of the Holy Spirit to perfect holiness within us. And so I know I'm talking quick, but I want you to hear this. I have been in services, you all, where I have seen demons scream coming out of well-meaning, love God, God-fearing, singing the choir, play musicians, you know, play the instruments, um, you know, tongue talking, church going, go to 52 conventions per year, Christians. Listen, you all, if it makes you feel any better, I have been in prayer meetings. I have been in prayer meetings specifically in at my spiritual parents' house, you know, back in the day, 2015, 16, 17, 18. And, and, and I've been in prayer meetings where the baptism of the Holy Spirit falls, where the glory of God begins to just manifest and things begin to break 
break off of my life that I did not even know were, were there. Habits begin to fall off. Behaviors begin to fall off. Attitudes of thinking begin to fall off. Addictions to pornography were broken during that season. There were things that God washed and cleansed and purged that was of residue that I didn't even know I had and stuff that I thought I was dealt with, but God showed me there was still residue. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that the average believer needs further deliverance and further healing, but you think in your religiosity and in your self-righteousness and the fact that you got it all together that no, there's not anything harboring within your heart. But remember what the Lord said. He said that the heart is desperately wicked. Who else knows it but God? We have this cinematic idea of what demonology looks like. We've watched too many Hollywood movies and we think that someone who is being influenced by the devil has to be foaming off at the mouth, has to be speaking in this deep, dark tone voice. Are there manifestations like that? Absolutely. But when you're talking about a spirit filled believer. Nine out of the 10 times deliverance from a believer, not all the time, but most times it may not look as theatrical or as dramatic as one who is an unbeliever who actually has the possession of a demon in their spirit. When you're talking about a believer, the demons are operating in the realm of your flesh, the realm of your soul. Spirits and spirits such as lust and anger and bitterness and rage and unforgiveness and pride and selfishness. Uh, let me tell you something. In my opinion, the three dominating spirits that are operating in Christians right now that most need deliverance from is the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of unforgiveness, and the spirit of resentment. Those three spirits are harboring in the hearts of millions of believers who are going to church singing, I give myself away crying, but don't even realize. You know why? Because the heart has many layers. The heart has so much depth to it. And sometimes it takes the right song at the right moment. It takes the right sermon at the right moment. It takes the right encounter at the right moment to go into the deeper areas of your heart that religion was not strong enough to break through to actually get to that stronghold to break it. So many of us go to church and we do church things. We act churchy. We post church statements and, and, and we go throughout our life. And because we look normal, Oh, I'm good. Oh, but if we could get a revelation of the depth of how God created us, the, the, the depth of our spirit, the depth of our soul, the depth of our body. There are layers and residue that are deeply hidden at the very bottom, the crest of your soul that the light of God's word has yet to penetrate. And so I just want to encourage you in this video in 2023, let us enter into this year, friends and family. Let us just humble ourselves this year, y'all. God is trying to show us ourselves in this year. Let me share with you prophetically what God wants to do. He wants to show you you this year. But the trick of the enemy, I, I shared a post from Apostle Jennifer LeClaire. The trick of the enemy is, is, is to think that the prophetic movement of God is so focus on exposing everybody else while you are not examining yourself. I really want you to be transparent with God this year and talk to him. Go into your prayer closet and really talk to God. I promise you, I put my hand on the Bible. If you ask him, show me what is in me that I do not see. David said, if you find anything in me that is not like, search me, O oh Lord. If you find anything that is not like me, that is, that is in me, that is not like you, remove it. Uh, he will show you some things. He will show you areas in your heart, in the, your emotional wounds, in your trauma, in your past, in your memory bank, in your psyche that is in housing spirits that sometimes have been there for decades. The Lord wants to increase and accelerate this spirit of deliverance. Again, I know that there's a hyper movement of deliverance that is out there, but I'm talking about the constant flow of purification that, not, that must take place in the believer. So I want to pray with you and for you before I end this video. <clears throat> 
And I want you to know something, that even in our exhortation for holiness, that no preacher by any means, even if we are struggling, we are never to less, lesser, or what's the word, lessen the standard of, of the exhortation for holiness. What that means is it doesn't matter how many struggles a preacher has, holiness without which no man should see the Lord. It should not change our theology, but, but we understand that even in our preaching of holiness, we are still practicing and perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord, meaning it's a day by day journey. And sometimes we fall, sometimes we backslide, sometimes we say, and we do things that are straight up um, and um, missing the mark. It's a sin. And so we go back to God and we go through the process of repentance and purification. I want to pray with you that God would bring you into the revelation of what is in you and that he would show you the correct way he wants to deliver you. There are times where God will deliver you through the word. I mean, it's just you and God and the spirit of the word just comes in and just does supernatural work in you. There are times where you will experience deliverance in worship. And in the presence of God, there are times where maybe God wants you to go at it the old school way because it's been an issue that has been attached to your flesh for so long that you need the help of a brother or a sister or a pastor, mother, father. And so he'll lead you and he'll say, go to this church at six o'clock. There's a prayer meeting. And when they have an altar call, go up and confess your sins. And of course, the devil will fight you. But if you humble yourself and you come into agreement and it's a house of prayer, he will allow the anointing of deliverance to move upon the altar workers. They will lay hands on you, anoint you with oil and take you through the process of deliverance. It may not be that way. It may not be dramatic, but the point is, are there things still in you that you think you got all together, but there's residue and there's remnants? I'm telling you in this season, God is placing his finger on bitterness, on unforgiveness, on resentment, on self-righteousness, we always talk about sexual sins. We, uh, we, we love to stay in that category in the body of Christ. But I'm telling you, God is highlighting the sins of the heart, not just the sins of the body. Okay? That's 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I believe. So I want to pray with you now, first and foremost, that the Lord would enlighten the eyes of your understanding, that he would give you wisdom and revelation to discern yourself. That he would give you the ability to examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. I pray even now in Jesus name that the Lord would pour into you and upon you a spirit of deliverance, a spirit of prayer so that you would be able to deal with the things that are that are oppressing you. I pray that God would even give you a revelation on the ministry of deliverance that you would stop criticizing it, but rather come into it so that you can experience another level of liberty and transformation and conversion. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will lead you to a community or to to a church or to even a house ministry that will be able to walk you through the process of purification, of holiness and of deliverance and also discipleship, a ministry that will not bash you or shame you, but will approach you with the spirit of love and gentleness with this one agenda in mind to restore you in the name of Jesus. I even bind the voices of the enemy that will come that has been coming, trying to kill, steal and destroy and rob you, put on the whole armor of God right now, having the helmet of salvation, knowing that you are saved and that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We silence the voice of the accuser, the brethren. We silence the voice of shame. We silence the voice of guilt and condemnation. But I pray that you would come into a season of deliverance, a season of transparency, that you would be able to discover at least one brother and one sister that you would be able to just confess and tell it all. I pray that this will be a year of an abundance of freedom and liberty, that God will pour upon you a chain breaking anointing in the name of Jesus. That the shackles, that the fetters, that the snares, that the lies, that the perception of the enemy that has clouded your judgment because there's still a stronghold there, that it would be broken through the truth and the impartation of the anointing of God's word. Friends and family, I bless you in Jesus name. 
And I'm encouraging you, don't be afraid of it. Do not be arrogant. Do not be prideful. We all need further healing and deliverance at times. Sometimes, if you be honest, you go through seasons where you got to go back to Calvary every day and say, God created me a clean heart. I reckon myself to be dead to this. Uh, you know, it's a process. It's a lifestyle. And the first step to coming into deliverance is to deal with the religion of appearance and performance and the masquerading that you got everything right. There's only one man who walked this earth that was perfectly sinless and his name is Jesus Christ. And we are arriving there. But Paul even said we have yet to apprehend it. Brothers and sisters, this is Pastor of Overcoming Church. And I'm coming into agreement for this season of deliverance for your life. God bless.